Hello my friends, welcome back, it's episode 61, it is <clears throat> the Epsom deployment. Uh, I've just been staring at the map for 20 minutes to gather my thoughts. And I've kind of noticed that um, <clears throat> these missions have got meta airport positioning, so I have no... Once again, have no airport supply hex. And the airports are... Within, within reason, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. <clears throat> they are either just in range or just out of range of, uh, of each other. So what that means is that, <clears throat> because you know I get the first turn, a, a dive on the enemy's um, fighters while they're still sat in the airport is very difficult to execute. Okay, so in terms of new gear, <clears throat> I don't believe that there's anything. No, I picked up some Panzer Panzer 4 version Fs from my industry connections, but that's uh basically the same as the the uh, it's the anti anti infantry variant of the tank <clears throat> and I don't find that to be particularly exciting so that's not really anything to write home about so we're just taking we're just taking the units that we had before basically into battle <clears throat> okay so since I can't repair my aircraft it makes very little sense to take a full air force. Uh, before I... Before I chip away this though, let me just... Unassign the heroes. So for me, a standard air force is exactly six units. So let's go with these. Okay, let's get bar in the front airport. <clears throat> Galland behind. Now, the reason that the you know. The reason why I've got uh, this fighter by itself is I'm going to buy a load of um, spy planes, of course, <clears throat> and use them to pad out, pad out my air force. And uh, so having the fighter plane at the center of each airbase then allows it to protect <clears throat> all the aircraft. Um, I mean, I'll probably actually put a couple of spy planes in these airports, uh, in this airport here, which is going to go undefended. Um, I haven't, sorry, I haven't mentioned my strategy yet, but basically I'm going to just push up one side of the map, most likely. This side, because the airport is better positioned. <clears throat> so I'll push up one side of the map, crush my way up, and then... Having crushed my way up one side, I'll have forward air bases that I can use to then attack across and down. While just holding the enemy here on this side, which shouldn't be too difficult. Right. I really have no desire to use a flame tank anymore. It's got four close combat defense now. That's new. I don't remember it having four close combat defense. But maybe I'm misremembering. Shuffle these in. <clears throat> I 
these guys still require um, still require their steamroll. Now, if I'm going to use the, uh... Uh, where is it? Did I not use it? I was going to say, if I use the Nabblewer, the Nabblewerfer, I need the, um... I need the Readiness Hero. Do you know what? I'll leave it for now. <clears throat> it's fine. It's got full EXP, so... It almost feels like a waste to use tanks that have got full EXP. And this one's got Steamroller, but it doesn't have full EXP yet. Hmm. So I gotta try and do my best to put steamrolls on these guys. Um, <clears throat> I was having to think about artillery support, and um, so basically, artillery support turns any unit into an artillery. So, <clears throat> you can really put it on anything. I do have some tanks as well that have skilled support as an award. I don't know if it shows. Oh yeah, it does, it does show even if they're not. So you can actually set a tank to be a skilled supporter, which is funny. <laughs> so here's the funny thing. Uh, I used to think that adding artillery heroes to artillery was the best idea. Because then you always end up using them as artillery. But if you think about it, you get the artillery effect on any unit. And that unit does not have suppression, doesn't have the suppressive fire penalty. So you can actually create better artillery out of units that aren't artillery. <clears throat> Which is definitely amusing. We can get urban legend on these. Maybe not. They do fight in close combats though. Hmm. <clears throat> I guess the best thing would be to put it on a unit with low experience and high attack power. Like this tank has gotten very few tank and infantry kills even though it's actually got steamroller and its EXP is low. I should probably put it on here to bring up the experience. Probably gain experience faster being artillery support than with uh, double EXP. We can put fast loaner on this one. <clears throat> Just shove legendary somewhere. Okay, so I've got aggressive counterattack and 
hit and run. Unfortunately, aircraft uh, aircraft have got very poor offense uh, initiative values, so hit and run doesn't work on them. Anti-aircraft guns will always butcher them. Now, this guy gives plus two to initiative, so if we take no retaliation off, we can basically get the same effect with hit and run. Because with plus two to initiative, he will def they, they will definitely have a high enough initiative to deal with most targets. I think with the exception of paratroopers, potentially. <clears throat> that frees up no retaliation to give to another vehicle. Let's put it on the IVD. Aggressive counterattack. Hmm. I mean, it can go on anything really that's going to be on the front line. Aggressive counterattack goes best with readiness, but I'm using readiness on my fighter planes right now. And I believe that both of them already have. You know, there's, there's no space really. This guy already enjoys, uh... No, he doesn't, does he? Entrenchment killer. He doesn't have aggressive counterattack. Let's just stick it on a tank, why not? <clears throat> In fact, let's put it on a unit that's quite vulnerable. At least then it will make it less appealing to attack. Aggressive counterattack actually does have benefits in, in... ...sullying the AI's calculations and basically making it think that something is not worth attacking. You know, interestingly, this side of the map sort of looks a little bit op more open for a push. take some um, some cheap units and just uh, use them to fortify the area do is we'll use these these recons since they count as close combat 
put them in these two close tiles. <clears throat> if there are enemies here and they decide to plow in, then they should just be able to hold there while I respond. And what I'll do is I'll buy an auxiliary cheap as chips anti-tank gun. Well, look at that. I have an old quarter pounder with cheese. That'll do. That'll do while I'm busy. Um, okay, let's grab our... Let's grab our, our spy planes. Make a big pile of spy planes because I'm sure... I'm sure that the RAF will not tolerate my presence in their territory. Not happily, anyway. <clears throat> okay, I don't really need many spy planes over here because I'm just going to ignore this area early on. Okay. I would be tempted to tear the crew, um, take these tanks away. This one, this one, and this one, and swap in tanks that actually need steamroller. But uh, I think five, one, two, three, four, five. I think five tanks that need need steamroller is plenty. <clears throat> I'm sure I can organise that the right vehicles. Get their time in the sh in in the in the sun, as it were. Maybe I'll leave this light anti uh, this light anti air gun here as well. It's a soft target, so I can probably entrench it in the trees there. <clears throat> okay. This is the fast infantry, so I'm going to put the fast infantry here. Plus one recon. We're just going to take this little group and just sneak up here and just make sure it's all clear. I mean, the spy planes will show me everything I need to see, but I've got them in position to help me deal with a threat that's here. Okay, and then it's just the rest of the wheeled hatred. It almost makes you wonder if I should leave this light artillery here as well. Oh man, if there is a big British force and it just dives in. Mm, uh, I have committed a fair number of resources here. <clears throat> ah, what the hell. I got places to be... Let's put this infantry here so it can actually attack this tile. Support it with these two tanks, which are quite heavy. I'm going to clean one side of the map and then that's going to allow me to cut in. So I just, I don't have enough units for a long front line. Okay, we got plenty of auxiliary slots, so we will assess what the British have got, and then uh, and then deploy auxiliary units because we've got supply hexes here and here, <clears throat> so we can afford to actually get eyes on what the British have got before we deploy any auxiliary units, before we decide that that's necessary. But the general plan is to just have this group hold here. 
And then we'll have this group and this group push, push up this side of the map, clearing away the enemies up through this forested area, which might be a little bit tricky. And then up here and just clear away this whole area. Then cut across, clearing the way, and then come cutting back down. <clears throat> and who knows, depending on what they've got, we might even be able to set up a load of uh, boat boat engineers sort of along the river or something. Create the start of an encirclement and then just come down behind them. We'll see how this strategy works out anyway. <clears throat> 30 turns. So plenty of time. One thing I did notice while looking at this map as well is that this flag here is... Uh, is that the Falklands, I think? Or Faroe Islands or something? And uh, we've got the Australian flag over here. So there's... <clears throat> there might be special detachments in those areas, so I might I might be well advised to dispose of them as quickly as possible. All right, that's it. I don't really know what to expect, so I've played I've deployed in a really defensive tight ball, and I'm going to use these spy planes to try and find out all that is going on in this mission, <clears throat> so that I can make good decisions. And then uh, I'll just deploy auxiliary units as required. <clears throat> and we'll see how that works out. Alright, that's it for deployment. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.